What's awesome up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now it doesn't seem that long since I did the first impressions view of the Brooks Aurora BL. But today I just knocked out a long run, 17.2 miles, which is about 27.6 kilometers. An average pace of 8.34 a mile, which is 5.19 a kilometer. So with that, with that long run, that brings my total in the Brooks Aurora BL to 147 miles. And you know what that means? It means I put enough miles in this shoe to give you my full review. That's what we're doing. Okay, the Brooks Aurora BL. I think it's really a love it or hate it kind of shoe, although feelings can change. If you remember from my first impressions video, you know when this shoe was released, I looked at it and was like, ah, I kinda wanna go for a run in it, but nah. A couple months passed and my feelings started to change. I started looking at it, looking at it with different eyes. And still, and still after 147 miles, I am still really digging how this shoe looks. I, I don't know why I just smelled it. It's actually smelling pretty rank. But in its defense, it is still soaked with sweat after my 17 miler this morning. So hopefully when it dries out, the smell will dissipate. But guys, if you're watching this video, then obviously you're interested in this shoe or you're just interested in hearing my opinions on this shoe. But for those of you that are interested that are thinking about buying it, this shoe retails for around $200 in the US or 180 pounds in the UK. Of course, I will link to this shoe using my affiliate link at Jackrabbit in the show notes below. And if you buy through them, you don't pay any more, but doing so just helps the channel. So thanks for that. Look, look at this big chunk of midsole in the back. This is, this, is what, this is what I like to see. But we're gonna get more into that. Let's just run over a few of the specs. Starting at the back, the heel counter, kind of loose. Look at it, look at this, look at me bending it all over the place like this. Yeah, kind of loose, and the heel collar is very, very thin. Now hold on, you might be thinking, oh man, that doesn't sound too good. Dodgy heel counter, super thin heel collar, isn't that gonna rub my foot? No. The tongue, the tongue, it's almost like a booty construction tongue. You know, they call it a gusseted tongue, but it's really, really not. It doesn't really have a gusset unless the whole tongue is actually one big gusset that comes over the top of your foot. But your foot slides in nicely, feels very good when you cinch those laces down, gives you a nice lockdown across the midfoot. You know, already I think I've started this video a little, a little too enthusiastic. I think you know where this is going. Let me just be right up front with you. I, I really like this shoe. I've enjoyed every one of those 147 miles that I've put in it. I do have a negative, which I'm gonna get to in just a few minutes. So hold your horses. We do have a mono mesh upper. And let me tell you, this mono mesh upper, it's where it's at. There's absolutely no need to add that extra weight from a dual mesh upper that so many shoes insist on doing. Now, listen, I understand having a dual mesh upper does make the shoe a little more resilient. You know, you know, sometimes your big toe can push through the upper. Obviously when it's a mono mesh, it's more likely to happen if that happens to you. With a dual mesh upper, you've got twice the protection, so it doesn't happen. After 147 miles, I am not noticing anything around where my big toe is. And this mono mesh upper is, is super light and super transparent, so you will see your socks. Ordinarily, I'm sure you don't really think about your running socks, you just pull them on. But with the Aurora BL, you might want to give that a second thought, because if you wear some socks that are a little brighter or a little darker, I, or colors or I don't know. Look, all of that to say this, you're gonna see your socks through the upper. Now think about it, it doesn't, doesn't really matter at all, does it? We do have the Brooks logo kind of, it's kind of like a rubberized transfer, almost like, you know, those old school iron-on transfers. Doesn't really give it any extra rigidity, but I didn't find that it needed it. The laces, the laces were just the laces. They tied well, they didn't come untied, and I didn't notice them biting into the top of my foot. So. 10 out of 10 for the laces. I think I kind of breezed over the heel counter and the heel collar. I have put hours, hours and hours and hours in this shoe. And I tell you the reason that I have put 147 miles so quickly in this shoe is because these have become the shoe that I actually reach for. When I'm going out for my easy runs, these are the shoes that I want to put on. And I don't like that feeling, that heel slip feeling. I mean, who likes the heel slip feeling? Even though this is loose, the heel collar is very thin. I didn't have any rubbing and I haven't had any heel slip, not once. So whatever Brooks is doing with the back here, obviously it's very minimal to save weight. It's working. Kind of makes me think, why do these daily trainers, these max cushion shoes, insist on so much cushioning all over the place. When the Aurora BL has proven 
that you can have a max cushion daily trainer with a lightweight kind of racer upper and it works like a charm. All right, let's move on down to the midsole because the midsole, the midsole is actually what catches your eye. When you see this shoe on all the Brooks marketing campaigns, you see it's a big chunk of marshmallow right there on the bottom. It's massive. Brooks is using a nitrogen injected DNA loft version three. The version three is far superior than the version two. Don't ask me to explain why, it just is. And all that, that nitrogen infused midsole, that mono mesh upper, the light, the Obviously, they're paying attention to weight, guys. Makes this shoe, makes the Aurora BL. Tip to scale at 8.5 ounces or 225 grams for a men's size nine in the US, eight in the UK. I wish I wore a men's size nine, but if I did, I'd probably fall over from the lack of support. But I wear a men's size 13. And in my size, obviously, more shoe, more weight. My size tips to scale at 10.4 ounces or 294 grams. And I have to tell you, guys, under 300 grams for a daily trainer in my size is revolutionary too strong a word? Probably. But it's very good. It is very good indeed. I've been holding this shoe for like a few minutes now and it still feels as light as ever. Of course, some of you are thinking, Max, you can't hold a shoe for a couple of minutes. Got more problems than a heavy shoe. I realize that this review is jumping all over the place. But I promise you, I'm gonna give you all the information you need, all the information in order to make a wise purchasing decision. Now that we've started on the upper, gone down to the midsole, gone back to the upper, let's go back to the midsole. Brooks uses a large cell foaming process. And this amplifies softness and energy return without sacrificing durability. So here's a lot of foreshadowing. It's not sacrificing durability in the midsole. What else could there be that could sacrifice durability? We're getting to it, we're getting to it. Brooks uses glide roll technology in their midsole, but we're gonna, we're gonna talk more about that in just a second. And there is a six millimeter heel to toe drop. Pretty ideal. To me, six millimeters is right in the sweet spot. So let's go to the bottom because this is, uh, this is revolutionary. If I was talking about something revolutionary, it is this. The Aurora BL features a decoupled midsole, which means the forefoot, is not attached to the heel. There is this big valley running right through the middle. And even though Brooks says that this has a glide roll technology incorporated into the shoe, I'm just, I'm not sure what that actually means with glide roll. Because the midsole is decoupled, separating the front from the back. I don't know if it rolls through your ground contact time the same way a shoe would with a single piece of foam on the bottom. Now, honestly, I can't say I actually noticed the difference. I can't say I noticed how it felt. I'm just thinking about it as I'm looking at it. It doesn't look like you would roll straight through. If you have these shoes, if you've put a few miles in them, let me know what you think. How does this shoe ride to you? Because even though I just brought that up, how I'm not sure how it actually works, it does work. This shoe looks like it would be mega soft, right? We have, I mean, like two inches of stack height here in the back. I mean, it's absolutely massive. But when you put the shoe on, it is like the Goldilocks spot of softness. Sometimes we want a softer shoe when we're just taking it easy. Sometimes we want a little stiffer shoe when we're going out to do speed work. This straddles that line. It is soft, it is a daily trainer, and it feels really good. And your body doesn't get beat up like it would if you do a long run in a shoe with a stiffer midsole. But even though this looks like it would be just super plush, it rides just a tad firmer. And that, that is the primary reason that this has been the shoe that I have gravitated towards for the couple months that I've had it. So over the couple months, I have actually put in every type of run in this shoe. Well, maybe not every type of run. I haven't been to the track. Obviously, this is not a track shoe. But I have done long runs. I have done tempo runs. I have done intervals, kind of shorter intervals, 400s. And although I do have shoes that probably are better suited to those kind of workouts, I still wanted to test it out for you guys to see how this shoe felt. And honestly, the best thing I can say about this shoe, it feels light and you forget that it's on your foot. The Aurora BL really is a treat to run it. Now, I do want to bring up that one thing I told you about that I'm not 100% happy with. And remember, this shoe is 200 US dollars or 180 pounds in the UK. I want to bring your attention to the outsole. Now, we've got this strategically placed rubber, obviously to keep the weight down, but after 147 miles, after only 236 kilometers, my forefoot right here, right where it said designed in Seattle, I'm seeing quite a bit of wear. I'm seeing the wear kind of taper off into the midsole. But that's not the worst of it. The place on most of my shoes where I see the most amount of wear is on the outside heel. And back here, on the outside heel, this is my right foot. There is just smooth rubber that has tapered right into the midsole. So after only 147 miles, I am starting to touch the midsole. Now, perhaps you're happy paying $200 for a shoe that realistically is going to go 200 miles before I really start having some problems. But if you're not, I don't know. I mean, this shoe feels good. I'd even go so far as to say that this is my favorite shoe that I run in on a daily basis. You all know I'm a big fan of running easy. I do just like going out and enjoying my time on the run. And if I had to choose one shoe to run in, 
this would be it. But, and this is a big but, and this is probably going to keep me from buying this shoe again. Guys, the resilience just isn't there. I don't know if this is a deal breaker. Maybe a deal breaker for you. So guys, let me know. Let me know in the comments. What do you think of the shoe? If you have run in it, obviously I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear your opinions. But if you haven't run in it, would you like to? What do you think? Is this, is this something you're into? Guys, my name is Matt. I post new running videos at least twice a week. This has been my full review of the Brooks Aurora BL. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.